Okay, so it is October the 11th. It's a Tuesday, and um, I'm just kind of coming off of a couple of weeks of hectic craziness going on. I shouldn't say crazy. It wasn't that crazy. I went home to visit my family a couple of weeks ago, and then when I got back last week, I had my wisdom teeth removed because I'm planning to get Invisalign. Um, this will be my second time having braces. Wear your retainer. My mom came and visited while I was getting my wisdom teeth removed. She just left and now I am finally able to get back into my sewing groove. I'm very excited to work on some new projects. Um, if you watched a couple of videos back, it's been almost a month ago now, I posted my fall sewing plans and now I'm finally getting into some of those plans. So today I'm gonna kind of just spend some time tidying up my studio. I have some fabric that I need to wash that I ordered for some of the projects that I have coming up. And yeah, I'm kind of getting back into the flow. One nice thing about taking a break from sewing is that whenever I come back to it, I feel so inspired and so renewed and so ready to work on so many different things. So yeah, I'm very, very much in a good mood right now. The weather here in Michigan the last few days has been absolutely gorgeous. We're starting to get some fall color here and yeah, can't complain. I'm in a good mood, ready to sew, ready to get back into my sojo. And I'm trying to figure out which projects I actually want to work on right now. I'm thinking I might start working on some little knit t-shirts or the knit button up with the collar that I was talking about before and maybe doing some fun projects with that knit mesh that I have. So that's kind of what's fresh on my mind right now but I'm also trying to sort of plan out my projects for the next few weeks. Obviously some of the projects that might take me a little bit longer I may go ahead and start kind of working on those now and you know give myself more time to work on those intermittently instead of trying to pack it all into one week. So that's the plan. If you can hear my washing machine, I'm sorry. I'm washing more fabric. But I wanted to sit down here and look through my pattern making for fashion design book and strategize about one of the knit mesh tops that I want to make. So for one of the tops I want to do kind of a turtleneck style, but I think instead of doing a separate band for the turtleneck part of the shirt, I want to do a built up neckline so it's just all one piece with the bodice. And so on page 20, well page 203 and 204 of this book, they have some instructions for how to draft that. So I'm probably just going to use this example on page 205 so that it's all one piece and then I think I might try to do like a lettuce edge hem around the neckline and around the sleeves. I think that'll look kind of cool and it'll be a very simple design. It'll just be you know two pattern pieces for the bodice and then a pattern piece for the sleeves. So yeah. Oh my god! I have no idea what to say. Oh Alright so here I have the two mesh fabrics that I'm planning to use for the turtleneck and the button up. I think I'm going to use this small ditzy ditzy print for the turtleneck version and then I'm going to use this larger moody floral print for the button-up shirt version. I've got my comfy tee pattern here pulled it out and I'm just going to be basically doing a few easy little modifications to this pattern to make it work and for the turtleneck I'm just going to be extending the neckline a little bit and kind of creating a little mock neck here on that and then for the button-up I'm actually going to be using the collar from my birdie button up blouse. I actually have tested this out. I did this kind of last season, but I made this shirt here that I've actually worn quite a lot. I made it in that heavy rib knit that I used for the those little tube top tank tops that I made earlier this summer and it worked out really great. I've actually really been loving this particular shirt. I should try it on for you guys so you can see it. It's basically just the comfy tee pattern. I split it down the front, added this button placket, some buttonholes and buttons, and then I also added a collar. The only thing that I did differently from the shape of the comfy tee is that I just did this one straight down. I wanted this to be a little bit looser fit. So I'm basically going to use the same concept that I used to hack the pattern into this style and do it out of the mesh. But yeah, this is just the birdie button up collar piece here that I used. It is double sided. So I just cut two pieces. The only thing that I'm kind of concerned about with the mesh is interfacing the collar or not even interfacing it but just kind of stabilizing it while I sew it to the shirt because it is so sheer and quite stretchy so I may have to kind of think on that but I think I'm going to start with the turtleneck first just because I kind of have a pretty clear idea of how I want to move forward with that and I think that one will be a little bit more straightforward and it'll kind of get me used to working with this really fine knit mesh. 
I'll also put a link down in the description to where I got the mesh fabric. I got it on Etsy and I can never remember the name of the shop whenever I start filming. Um, so I'll put a link to that and I'll kind of pop a little image up here so you can see that. To draft the neckline for the turtleneck, I started at the center of the shoulder and used my French curve to draw a curved line up about an inch from the neckline at the shoulder point. Then I was kind of second guessing myself and decided to make it a little bit taller, so I ended up going up two inches. Then I just used my French curve again to draft the top of the neckline, making sure to get a right angle at the center front and at the point where the top of the neckline meets the line where it extends from the shoulder. And I kind of just messed around with it for a little while until I felt like it looked right. I do this a lot when I'm drafting. I kind of draft on the fly. I want to make sure I mark out the lines I don't need. And the finished width of the collar at this point was about three and a half inches. Um, so the total circumference would be whatever three and a half is times four. I also decided to add about 3 8 of an inch to the side seam just to give myself a little bit more ease here because I just didn't want this to be so super tight. And whenever I add ease at the side seam like this, I also like to blend it back to the arm side just to make sure that the sleeve for the size that I'm cutting still works, if that makes any sense. So I just added on that extra 3 8 inch and then I also added on a 3 8 inch seam allowance to that neckline and blended it back to the shoulder because this pattern already does have seam allowance on it. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that that neckline extension had seam allowance as well. Now I'm going to be using the same pattern piece for the front and the back, but I do want to make a couple of notes about differences in the back bodice when I cut this. So the back bodice is just straight along the side seam and the front bodice has a little curve to account for the bust. So I want to make sure that I fold that out of the way when I cut the back bodice. And then the back bodice also extends about a centimeter out from the arm side compared to the front bodice. So I just want to make myself a little note to extend there when I'm cutting this out. This is just going to help me save a little bit of paper and um, I'll make sure to mark all of this on the opposite side of the pattern piece and make sure I label everything really clearly so I know what I'm cutting and you know can kind of keep myself straight when I'm cutting everything out. I'll be cutting the sleeve normally, except I'm just going to add that 3 8 inch to the two side seams of the sleeve and blend it back down to the wrist of the sleeve. Okay, so I've got all of my pieces cut out here. I've got two sleeves and the two bodice pieces. So you would place these right sides together when sewing this together, but since this fabric doesn't have a right or wrong side, it really doesn't matter. But right sides together, I'm gonna to sew the shoulders together first. Also, I am going to be using my serger for, I'm pretty sure the entire assembly for this shirt, including the lettuce edge hemming, which I haven't done on a serger before, but I was looking up some videos last night on YouTube to see how to do that. So I think it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to use a serger to do this. Although with a fabric like this, that's such a fine mesh and knit and stretchy. I think a serger really is the most ideal way to assemble this. And I just love my serger. I find it makes sewing with knits so much easier. But yeah, if you did, if you don't have a serger and you wanted to make something like this, I would suggest using a very short stitch length on a zigzag stitch with a wide stitch width. The stitches are very close together so that you really make sure that you're grabbing as much of the fabric as possible so that it doesn't pull apart. So yeah, anyway, onward. Okay, so I did a quick little try on before I put the sleeves on and actually I think this is fine. Now because this is a grown on neck and I didn't really do any shaping to the front here, it is a little bit kind of doing a kind of cowl neck vibe right here, but I don't hate it. 
And I actually think that the, the height that I did this is just about right. And I don't mind that it's a little bit slouchy right here. So I'm happy with the direction this is going and it is quite sheer, but like right now I'm just wearing a sports bra underneath this. And I feel like there's still a little bit left to the imagination. So when I have on a dark tank top, I think this will be just right. And I actually kind of like that it's a little bit more muted against my skin. One other thing I will note as well is when I pulled this overhead, like the width that I made this was probably the minimum that I would want to go with this to get it overhead for the stretchiness of this fabric. Because I could just get it over my head without feeling like I was going to you know, overstretch it or break some seams. I've talked about this before. I have kind of a large head, but I don't think my head's that large. So anyway, the, I think that that would be kind of the max that you would wanna, or the minimum that you would wanna make this to get it overhead comfortably. To install the sleeves, I'm just going to open up the bodice and lay it right side up so that the arm side is fully extended. And then I will line up the sleeve cap with the arm side, making sure to match up all of the notches. Then I will use my serger to sew the sleeve to the arm side. And I have done this for both sleeves and I've now got the bodice folded right sides together. And now I will just sew the sleeve seam and the side seam at the same time on both sides. I also decided that I wanted to kind of square off this shoulder to turtleneck seam. So I'm just gonna baste it first just to make sure that I like that decision and I'll try it on to test the fit. And then I will take it over to the serger and sew it permanently if I like it. Okay, so it's still a little bit, you know, wide up here, which is fine because I still need this to be wide to get over my head. But I think taking that in, which is really hard to see here, but I basically took it in right here and then straight up. It definitely helps it stand up a little bit more on the front of the neck. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. Okay, so I am ready to move on to the button up version of the mesh shirt. However, I do want to pop into Joann Fabrics today and just see if they have any options for like stabilizing or interfacing the collar and the placket, the button band for the front, the center front. With this mesh knit, you don't really want an interfacing that's going to show through. I'm not really sure what my options are for this, so I just kind of want to go look around, look at their interfacing. I might I might do a knit interfacing, but I'm afraid that'll show through. Uh, I might actually look at some buttons. I probably have some buttons here too. I'm also gonna wait to do the lettuce edge hemming on the turtleneck version until after I sew the button up shirt version because I need to change the settings on my serger and I don't wanna have to change them back and make more work for myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew the button up version. Then I'll switch out and do the lettuce edge hem detailing for you. For the button-up shirt, I traced the T pattern exactly as it is. I just added a centimeter at the neckline to make the neckline a little closer to the neck. And I also measured the neckline on both the front and the back and made sure that it was going to match up with the collar that I cut out without the seam allowance. You want to make sure that you omit the seam allowance when you're measuring to make sure that things fit. In most of the inspiration images that I found for this shirt, the front bodice is ruched along the center front. To do this, I'm just gonna use the slash and spread method to create several pivot points along the side seam, and I'm gonna open up the center front, basically. And these are about, I don't know, about an inch apart, and I'm spreading them about a half inch apart. And this is gonna make the center front of the bodice curve, and I wanna make sure that I keep this nice and flat. So I'm just gonna tape extra paper in here to make sure that this stays nice and flat. Then I will cut away the excess, and I will have my pattern. I wanna make sure that I mark notches at the top and the bottom of where I started the slash and spread because this is where I'm going to gather the front bodice. I also want to create a placket that is the same length as the original pattern plus that extra 3 8 inch that I added to the neckline there. And I'll just make sure to mark notches that match up with the top and the bottom of the locations where I started the slash and spread so that when I gather this, I know where to attach it to this placket or button band. 
And as a side note, I keep using button band and placket throughout this video. Interchangeably, they are the same thing, just in case it's confusing, they're the same thing, just so you know. So I think for interfacing the button bands and the collar of this button up, I'm gonna go with the black mesh because it is still pretty see-through. It, it's a little bit more stable than the tool that I picked up, which I could probably use that tool for something else. Uh, anyway, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll be using this mesh layer as an interfacing that is sewn in instead of a fusible interfacing, which is ironed on and adhered to the fabric. And I'm not gonna go into too much great detail about how I'm constructing the collar just because I've gone over this in other videos. Uh, I recommend you check out my birdie button up video. I'll put a link to that in the cards and down below and you can kind of see how I like to construct the collar, which is adapted from the book Shirt Making by David Page Coffin. It's a really fantastic book and I highly recommend you check it out. I'll put a link to that as well. But it's a pretty basic and straightforward shirt collar construction. The only difference here is that I'm sewing this in a knit stretchy fabric instead of a non-stretch woven fabric. And before you come for me in the comments, you know who you are. Complaining that this is not enough instruction for beginners. Honestly, I, I don't think this is really a great project for beginners unless you're just super adventurous in that case go for it. So I just kind of want to put that out there. It's also kind of difficult sometimes to give really detailed instruction for every single technique in a video without making the videos really, really long. So <laughs> for this one, I am keeping it brief and we can set the collar aside for now. Okay. So change of plans. I have decided to use the fusible knit interfacing to interface the button band because when I was trying to sew this on just to do like a sewn on interfacing, it was just getting a little bit too wonky and I definitely need to stabilize this. So I'm going to adhere the fusible interfacing to the button bands and then I will proceed with attaching those to the front of the shirt. Before I attach the button band to the front of the shirt, I need to ruche the front of the shirt. So I'm gonna sew two rows of basting stitches with a really long stitch length along the curved portion in between those notches that we marked when we were creating the pattern. Then I'll align those notches with the button band notches. And I'm just going to gently pull the threads, the basting threads to gather the bodice there where I did the slash and spread method and make sure that that's evenly distributed along the button band between the notches. And I'll pin this in place pretty liberally and then also pin the rest of the front of the shirt to the button band right sides together. And I'll sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once I have the button band sewn to the front of the bodice, I can then remove those basting stitches and they should pull out pretty easily. I also wanna trim that seam allowance down to about half and then I will press the button band away from the bodice, making sure that the seam allowance is pressed toward the button band. So now I have just sewed the front bodice pieces to the back bodice at the shoulders first, then I attached the sleeves and then sewed the sleeve seam and the side seam the same way that I did for the other shirt. So now I can start attaching the collar and I haven't finished the placket yet. I just have the placket pressed. And so eventually I will fold these plackets over and finish them. But before I do that, I wanna attach the collar and I'm gonna attach the collar to where it will stop right at the edge of the placket and then I will finish the placket. That way I can still button up the placket and the collar won't overlap at the center front. I've pinned the under collar side of the collar assembly to the bodice right sides together and I've got the edge of the collar right at the edge of the placket where it's sewn to the bodice. And so you can see I've just got the under collar and the interfacing pinned here. And I wanna make sure that I keep this other part of the collar folded out of the way while I sew this to the bodice. Once I get that sewn on, I'm gonna use Wonder Tape, which is just an adhesive, a double-sided adhesive tape used in sewing. It'll eventually wash away to secure the upper collar to the interior of the neckline. So I'm just folding that under and sticking it down. That wonder tape is gonna help keep that secure while I sew it on. And I also added some pins to help keep it in place. And I'll just edge stitch along the entire neckline there to secure the other side of the collar. 
I've also folded the placket in half, right sides together, toward the outside of the bodice. And I folded a little fold right in the edge there that aligns with the, where the placket is attached to the shirt and butts up against the collar edge. And I just wanna sew across the top of that so that I can turn this right side out and the top of the placket is finished and that top corner of the placket meets up with the bottom corner of the collar. I'm also gonna use Wonder Tape to secure the placket on the interior side of the bodice. I've just folded it under and taped it all along the length of the placket. And now I can sew that down on the machine. I'm just doing an edge stitch to secure the placket from the interior of the bodice. When I get to the top of the placket, I started at the bottom, when I get to the top of the placket and meet the collar, I'm also gonna edge stitch all the way around the collar. And I'm doing this all in one continuous stitch. When I get to the other side of the collar, I'll continue down the opposite placket all the way to the bottom hem. Okay, I have reached that point in the day where I'm getting very tired and I think it's time to take a break and step away from the sewing machine. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get up early and finish the buttons and buttonholes. I'll do the hemming on the shirt and then I'm gonna change the settings on my serger so that I can do that lettuce edge hem, which I will share with you guys. I actually had one of my viewers a while back commented something along the, line, along the lines of, it's best to only sew for a few hours at a time. So like, I don't know, two to four hours at a time. And I think that that is like such good advice because I love sewing. I sew all the time and there are weeks where I'm sewing, you know, every day, but I'm always happiest. And I feel like my projects always turn out better when I'm sewing in smaller windows of time. So just a few hours here and there, it's a good thing for me to take breaks. And I do consider myself a pretty productive sewer and I'm pretty fast, but um, yeah, there are times when I'm like, working myself a little bit too much and I can feel it coming on and my body starts to kind of ache and I know I need to take a break and I keep pushing and pushing and then I end up getting frustrated and making mistakes. So I don't want to do that. Um, anyhow, I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to work on editing this video and tomorrow I will put the finishing touches on these blouses that I am so excited about. I'm really happy with how they're turning out. <laughs> According to my manual, if I want to do a lettuce edge hem on the Baby Lock Imagine serger, I need to set the machine for the three thread rolled edge. So now I've got it set up for a three thread rolled edge. And then I need to do the other steps to make this a lettuce edge. Set the differential feed at 0.6 which is here. So let me close this so I can see. So that's all the way down. I'm gonna do this on a scrap piece of fabric first and I'll see how that turns out after I do the scrap. I think the trick is to, is to really stretch it very taut as it goes under the needle on both the front and the back side of the needle, like on both sides. The more stretch you can apply to it, the better the lettuce edge is gonna be. And actually, I think that is looking pretty good.
O-M-G. I love these shirts. Uh, this is one of two of my favorite things I've ever made. I am so pleased with how these turned out and yeah, very, very happy with these. I love them styled with this skirt. This is the Ava skirt from So Over It London. I'll put a link in the description to that. And then I also really like these pieces styled with a thrifted jacket. It's an express jacket that I thrifted last winter, I think. It's just a little corduroy double-breasted long line blazer and I love that coat and it looks so good styled with these pieces. So I'm just super, super stoked about how these turned out. I feel like this fall I've been doing a better job of just being more focused about the type of wardrobe that I wanna have and keeping things very cohesive. And these two shirts fit so well with things that I already have. And I feel like these shirts are just me. Like this feels like the kind of thing that I want to wear. And it's so funny and so simple that clothing can make you feel so good. These shirts make me feel really good. I also really love that these tops kind of, they're, they're, a little, they're a little sexy, they're a little edgy, but they're not over the top. I am almost 40 and I'm happy to be almost 40. I don't have any qualms about growing older. I think aging is a gift and I feel good about aging. I still feel like I'm in my 20s and wearing something like this, being able to express myself and feel really good in the clothing that I'm wearing is important to me. And I feel like a nice, garment, good clothing that fits well and makes you feel good is just a celebration of your body and your existence on this planet. But maybe that is getting a little too out there. I don't care. I love clothing. <laughs> I love fashion. I've always enjoyed fashion and being able to design my own wardrobe is, is very empowering. And you know, if some of you are watching this and you aren't sewing yet and you're thinking about sewing, I can say, it's very rewarding and it may not be for everybody. That's okay too. If you don't enjoy sewing and you just enjoy watching people. So that's totally fine. And the fact that I'm like rambling on like this after making two shirts goes to show you how much of an impact this hobby has on my well-being. Now my inspiration for these tops came from garments that I found on Free People, the Free People website. And Free People definitely markets to a younger crowd. It's definitely a much more bohemian and there's like a spider right here that has just been like hanging out with me this whole time. Um, Free People kind of market, markets itself to a younger demographic, but I still like their stuff. But I do feel like these tops that I made are a nice balance between that sort of younger, more hip style and also feeling more mature and kind of growing into myself a little bit. This is so like Forever 21 meets almost 40 for me and I am here for it, I love it. And I hope you guys loved it too. If you did enjoy this video and you'd like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. So yeah, I'm very excited to actually wear these out in public. I have to go somewhere now. I work from home, I'm home all the time. I don't really go many places where I get to dress a little bit fancier, <laughs> but maybe I can get my husband to take me out to dinner and my new duds twice. Okay, I think that's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video. Bye.